Good morning, everyone. I hope that you can hear me. You can just try to comment something on the chat just to make sure that we can hear and see each other. I hope you can hear me or see me. So I guess that we will be starting the presentation in a couple of minutes. If you don't mind, try commenting something on the chat so that we can see that this works well. Okay, great. I guess that we can start. So, good morning, everyone. My name is uh, Konstantinos Viglas, and I'm uh, coming here today to talk about a few things about uh, the study that we have run in Sweden. I am voluntarily serving um, PMI Sweden chapter or Project Management Institute, the Swedish chapter, as uh, the director of research and uh, one of the most relevant thing that we have done so far is what you're going to see for the next uh, half an hour. So this is all about the, the Swedish project review. On the, on the other side, I'm working uh, as the vice president and the head of infrastructure and collaboration services at ATEA. ATEA is uh, a company that is a market leader in the IT infrastructure. And uh, we are the number one company in Nordic countries on that. And I think within Europe, we must be within the top three. And um, indeed, uh, today we're going to share about a few things on our findings and what we have done around that. So today's subject is about Swedish Project Review 2020, which then the subject of this uh, work was uh, the, the, the subject of the year was decoding the path to digital adoption. And uh, the Swedish, uh, as an agenda of uh, what we will be seeing, um, we're going to talk about a few things about the PMI Sweden chapter. On the other side, uh, we will be reflecting about the Swedish project review in brief and talk about a few areas of what we have studied uh, so far. Um, uh, some areas around uh, some areas around uh, government governance, strategic alignment, processes and methods, risk management, and knowledge and leadership. These are some of the areas where we are addressing. Uh, towards our uh, respondents to our surveys to track project success in organizations. Then we are coming for the results that we have around the decoding our subject of the year, which is decoding the path to digital adoption. And what do we as PMI Sweden do? I think it's important also to say that uh, because during this presentation, there is a kind of a lag of 10 to 15 seconds to what you hear, to where I am in the presentation. If you have any comments, don't hesitate to put them on the to put them into the chat and I will be answering them uh, down the way. Then, what do we do as PMI Sweden chapter? Where we have a very simple mission. We want to promote, we are the evangelists of project management as a profession in Sweden. And uh, at the end of 2019, we were more than 1700 active members and uh, more than a hundred active volunteers. 
we are running uh, around 50 events every year with the biggest of all being uh, the passion for projects um, Passion for Projects Conference, which is a conference that is taking place uh, usually at the second week of March. And uh, it is hosting uh, for the last three or four years, it has hosted around six, uh, six to 800 uh, participants and, of course, very important keynote speakers. So if you are in any interested to watch a very, uh, to, want to, want to, to attend a conference with uh, and open your horizons around project management, that can be a very good opportunity for you. Within this piece of my, within those 104 uh, volunteers, you can see four of them that have been working on what we call the special project. So what we do is that we are implementing special projects for the chapter, upon, apart from the typical tasks that we have on running events or uh, recruiting more uh, members. And we are implementing such projects like Disciplined Agile or something that we recently started, the Brightline uh, Initiative, together with the founders of the Brightline Initiative. And uh, along with Ulla, Mikael and Vyorica, we are uh, producing for the now 2020 fourth year in a row the Swedish project uh, review. As we speak, we are preparing for 2021 uh, Swedish project review that's going to go out, uh, I think, somewhere in uh, April 2021. Then, what is this project, the uh, Swedish project review, or the SPR as we call it in short? Uh, Inspired from PMI, what we did is that uh, we attempted uh, to talk to, we attempted to, uh, to we, we were inspired from PMI and uh, we took several areas which we believe that are critical for project success. And we are trying to ask people across our country here in Sweden and understand uh, what do we need to do um, to, make, uh, to make that work. Uh, from capacity management to governance to processes and methods and any other aspects. And you, can, you will see later that we're doing some correlation of data and we're trying to make up some results. Sometimes somebody might say that those might be, you know, kind of self-fulfilled prophecy. But, uh, you know, sometimes the gut feeling comes together with facts and then there's not only gut feeling, it's facts and nobody can challenge them. About demographics, I mean, the last uh, the last survey that we had, um, it was around uh, 420, uh, around uh, 400 plus uh, respondents uh, from 45 industries. Uh, seven out of 10 uh, were, com were working at companies that are having revenue above uh, 500 million Swedish kroners or 50 million euros, more or less. And I can say that uh, as you can probably see on the left, uh, and probably I should, use my pointer. As you can see here, 38 of them are companies that are having revenue more than half a billion euros. Uh, about 70% of them are project managers, so down to earth, on the field project managers. And it's important to know that uh, even though I can say that this percentage for this year decreased a bit, we had around heads of PMO or uh, senior managers or C-level around uh, 15 to 16, 15%. Last year, this was around 20. Now, some trends that we see and challenges overall, I mean, after we run this survey and uh, we run this report, uh, the, the challenges that we see is that uh, around 12% of Swedish organizations score high in uh, achieving uh, success in their project. So rather low amount, rather low percentage, but this is what our people say. Uh, four out of five are struggling to find, to allocate sufficient resources. And on top of that, even though that is not something that we directly ask, they are struggling to find those resources, even into the market. So there is a strong uh, demand right now for the right, uh, for the right resources within Sweden and the Nordic countries. At the same time, 75% uh, of Swedish organizations are struggling to introduce um, new, new software, new technology. So on one side, unsuccessful projects in general. Uh, hard to find the right resources and hard to introduce them. So what needs to be done there? So one thing that we are addressing, one way that we are addressing that is in terms of uh, strategic uh, governance, strategic alignment. So in that area, we are trying to see how uh, how important, how we are able to, 
to set up the right uh, governance around organizations, around projects, to make sure that what we are promising is in line with the strategy of the organization. 98%, it's really an exhaustive percentage value, the importance of that, of having the right governance and the right strategic alignment as high. At the same time, um, we see, and uh, that could probably be seen in that area, comparing the 50 plus percent, 58 percent to almost 40 something percent, there is a decrease in senior management engagement from 2017 to 2020. So even though everyone believes that it's almost everyone, I mean 98 percent believe that it is important to have the right uh, governance, uh, then at the same time, the senior management seems to be absent from that. And uh, when we are correlating with questions that we are raising to our respondents of uh, if their projects were successful, and we are correlating that with the engagement of senior management, we see that the more engagement, the better, the higher, I mean, in that color, the higher engagement, the better success for, uh, for, uh, for projects. Uh, something that is worth to also mention there is that uh, we try to to isolate the results of the respondents that are sitting on senior management level. What they believe is that they are more actively engaged than the average. So we also clear we also see a clear uh, gap between the understanding of what senior management means active engagement to what their people need. Uh, moving on processes and methods. Uh, again, we see that uh, organizations that are establishing the right process and methods are 2.6 times uh, more likely to succeed than others that do not. And uh, when we correlate that also with risk management, which by the way is one of my favorite areas and I will come back to that, 80% of them seems to be also like high, likely high performance in risk uh, management. Uh, it is very promising to see that uh, around 65% or 78%, if I, 60, no, 70, yeah, 76% are having their processes documented, at least documented, not centralized, or centralized and documented, or well even documented. So most of them have them documented. Still, this is something that we have to invest in, in continuing bringing more on the centralized and well-documented level. And this is where we are insisting, and this is what we are promoting when we talk to organizations. Now, my favorite, uh, again, as we said, I mean, risk management. We did, we usually do kind of the similar question there. We are always asking people to, and that's what help us to do the right uh, trends, is that uh, we are asking our people to talk about how they perceive the importance of an area. And then what do they experience it? So 95% perceive uh, risk management as uh, medium, to high, uh, medium to high importance. Reality says that 19% of them experience high maturity levels. So what happens there? What happens is that uh, even though everyone believes that this is something, this is a typical oxymoron, something that we believe that is very important, but we realize low performance of it when it happens in our organizations. Again, correlating that with uh, maturity and uh, project success, uh, we see that the more organizations are going mature, the more, uh, the, the more they are mature in risk management, the more successful they are. And we try to do kind of a an analysis, a deeper analysis, to deep dive a bit into the private and the public sector. And uh, I cannot say surprisingly or less surprisingly uh, that, uh, I mean, things are rather balanced, but I would say that uh, private organizations seem to be more mature uh, comparing to public, uh, public sector organizations. Um, what is also Another finding that we have is that uh, the top scorers in that area uh, in risk management are the extra large organizations as well as the super small organizations, the small medium enterprises. And that is happening what we, when we did the kind of uh, more qualitative analysis around that and asked a bit more. We understood that big organizations have, of course, a lot to lose. So they are trying to be to be, to be excelling in risk management. And on the other side, the small medium enterprises, what they are offering is a niche, is a niche service. So they are giving attention 
to risk management to make sure that they distinguish between among uh, their peers. A very popular area within the Nordic countries where every where information is supposed to be shared and everybody is expected to be saying their opinion and trying to be helping things moving forward is knowledge and leadership. Um, and I can say that, uh, again, same question. Uh, well, how important is knowledge and leadership? 97% perceive that very important. 17% rate the maturity levels as high. Again, here, big organizations perform better because we see that they have the capacity to invest on that. And uh, when we are trying to, to look at, uh, we have tried and isolated four areas where we believe that they are relevant for knowledge and leadership. When we are addressing them, we see kind of similar trends. So mentoring and coach, mentorship and coaching, competency requirement, education certifications, and lessons learned. I think we see that uh, most of them are performing in a kind of a relevant way. One that is lagging is mentoring and mentorship and coaching, because as you can see, they are balanced. So high and low are on the sides and medium is somewhere raising, appearing higher in all areas, uh, the last three areas. While in the first one, uh, we don't see so much investment in mentorship and coaching. So for all you HR professionals out there, for all you experienced professionals out there, there is a big opportunity to, to enter such markets uh, by investing on those kind of areas. This is what will distinguish you from your, from your competition, being good vendors, being good coaches. Uh, then talking about uh, what's the path to digital adoption. Uh, when we are asking people that, of course, the, the trend continues to be there. As somebody comments in the, in the chat, uh, some not surprising is that everyone values that uh, highly. Still, three out of four struggle to successfully introduce uh, new technologies. And when we ask the people, what do they believe that they are the top? That's the number one enabler in uh, digital adoption. Not surprisingly or surprisingly, the higher, the one scoring higher was change management, followed by an already by a, a digitalization strategy that uh, is a way of uh, opening the path to digital adoption. Followed by the right governance and commitment, not only from senior management. Senior managers are not, I mean, the the, the magicians that are taking you know rabbits uh, out of hats. A commitment from everyone in the organization, well, with uh, technical capabilities and system selection, so the whole technical part of it, scoring lowest of all. So what does that say to us? That says to us that um, it is not really, I mean, the, 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 the systems that are out there that uh, are making it difficult for us to adopt in a digital uh, era. It is us, it is people, it is change management. It is, as you will see later in some reflections, what is in, what's in it for me, the what's in it for me model that we need to invest to persuade people. So moving forward, uh, we believe that um, uh, what, you, what we did is that we see where do we stand today and where we have to go. And I mean, digitalization, has to be accelerating the integration of IT and business. The COVID situation, I still laugh with uh, this uh, small uh, comic, pay and comic picture that says what uh, inspired the digitalization in your organization, your CIO, your CEO, or COVID. COVID is the one that really accelerated it. Uh, and we have to realize and we have to do more around that. And uh, we know that business and IT has uh, traditionally been kept separated. Uh, and I mean, even yesterday in some discussion, I heard uh, that, I mean, okay, uh, we are uh, IT and we are doing those things. We are not IT, we are not business. I mean, uh, our mobiles, I mean, the mobiles that we use or whatever else is technology. But I mean, we don't need, techno we don't need to put labels to us, business and IT. We are together into that. And uh, that's what, I mean, uh, the current situation requests for. I mean, operating models that have tight collaboration. And uh, at the same time, we see that project managements are the evangelists of, um, and I would say change managers at the same time, are the evangelists of uh, this uh, transformation and uh, their role remains to deliver successful projects. 
uh, agile, what a buzzword. Um, agile ways of working to deliver sustainable digital solutions. And uh, introducing agile principles is not easy. I heard uh, some months ago, I was attending a discussion where somebody was saying that, uh, don't talk about sprints. I mean, they are stressing people. Uh, why? We have to break this. We have to break this. Uh, um, at the same time, we need to understand that uh, we have to be enabling a uh, small transition, or as uh, Daniel says uh, from Channel 4, the most, the biggest uh, television broadcast, the, the biggest uh, TV channel in Sweden, that they like to break down changes into smaller pieces and smaller transitions that uh, to make sure that we are all aboard and avoid big bangs. So smooth, uh, smooth transitions, smooth transformations. And we shouldn't be, I mean, I mean, too straight into that. Agile might not always be the answer. Agile is important, but sometimes you have to steer yourself. There's no one size fits all. There's no one solution fits all. So in that context, we have to be challenging ourselves moving forward. Then for succeeding, um, what we see is that uh, three out of four organizations, and I can probably include uh, my organization, I mean, where we work together with Lorna, uh, that we are struggling with change management and we are working on it. We are in the middle of a big digital transformation as we speak. Uh, we see from our results that uh, people that are investing into that are three times more higher, higher, higher probability to succeed. And this is proven from already four years of uh, studies that we do. And um, again, as uh, Lorna was saying, is saying into the report, uh, communication is everything. The what's in it for me is something that we continuously invest on. And we believe that this is important and is, this is a key success factor. Um, then, what is, uh, what is it that uh, we can do? What is something that somebody can do here? Well, this is what makes a difference change management, approach the project as a business driver. This is not an IT implementation. This is not a business implementation. This is something that, a change that we're bringing into our business. Include both operations and IT to make sure that all voices are heard. We don't miss any stakeholder. The, the worst stakeholder is the one you have forgotten. Um, and then, as Daniel was saying earlier and many others, uh, think big, but start small. Build capabilities that stick, build capabilities down the way from making small successes and build on those to make, uh, to continue to your big uh, target. Um, what do we as uh, PMI Sweden do about that? Well, um, what we do is that we perform open seminars all across Sweden and with this right now we are going also outside Sweden. We visit organizations. We have visited organizations like uh, Tetra Pak, uh, like Husqvarna, like uh, others like uh, Hennes and Moritz and, uh, and H&M, I mean. And um, we are presenting the results. Uh, we are talking to project communities because what we hear sometimes, if you see the 400 and plus uh, respondents, those are people working those organizations. And they are our uh, inner connection. They are inviting us in to talk to their senior management and help them in their mission because we are a volunteer, we are a non-profit organization. What we are interested only of is helping us evolve and develop in this, uh, in this world. We, instead of you know, coming up uh, like a sales pitching or uh, introducing something that might, somebody might look like uh, they want just to sell, we use our insights, we use our facts to support the organization in solving their challenges, meaning that we don't go and present what you see right now as a standard content to all organizations. There have been companies that have asked, as they said, we are in the construction business and we are interested to hear more about risk management and how do you guys correlate data around risk management to success of capacity management or to success around benefit and financial management. And we are giving those insights and we are separating them as an industry uh, and that helps them to understand how do they perform because they know how to do their job internally and how do they perform against their own competition of course we are not sharing any kind of data with uh, with anyone i mean all public all uh, gdpr uh, 
issues are taken care of so that we don't send individual data. Uh, but this is helping organizations to know how they perform with each other and use that as a reference then when they're going out to their customers. Uh, again, we can benchmark between different industries and roles. So in 2018 in Gothenburg, we had the, the passion for projects where somebody, we were presenting the results more or less like that and somebody raised their hand in the audience and said, I'm a head of PMO and I would like to know what the other heads of PMO does. I mean, and we kind of switched the question and said, how many heads of PMO we have right now in the room? There were another six hands that raised, the, there were another six hands raised, we brought them together on the spot and uh, they started exchanging some information. But apart from the typical networking, there is also the part of uh, facts. So we are able to filter out and have a run such a report from a PMO perspective, head of PMO perspective, and see what do PM, heads of PMO respond against what their senior management respond. And that's a typical thing that we can do for an organization. Come and tell them what exactly the other PMOs in Sweden believe. So that sometimes can be helpful for this specific role to persuade their CEOs to go in one direction or the other, because we're not interested to sell here in any way. What we do is purely volunteer on a volunteer basis, and we are passionate about uh, project management. And uh, deep diving in one or more areas, I think that I described that we can take risk management, we can take capacity management, another fun of it, uh, fun, fun area, where everybody believes that people grow in trees. Uh, and suddenly when a project starts, uh, we don't have the right uh, specialists to help us succeed the multi-million investments that we are intended to put into. That was it. I see that I'm around 26 minutes. Uh, thank you very much for your attention, um, for your attendance also here. Um, as uh, you can see, I mean, my information, my connection, my, my information is there. So if anyone is uh, interested to reach out uh, for more around that or find the ways that we can help, we are always available. So are there any questions, any reflections? You, feel, you should feel free to comment into the chat. I'm not sure if you can... Uh, what I can also say, what I can also say about uh, that is that uh, there is right now as a next steps around uh, the Swedish project uh, review because we're already in the four years that we do that. Now we're entering in the fifth year. There is some interest to make that a Nordic uh, project review. So we are uh, investing. Um, we are discussing right now with Denmark and uh, Norway in how we can do that and I mean reach more than a thousand respondents and uh, continue using that. And the Swedish project review is one of the key deliverables of the Swedish uh, chapter. And uh, more and more of our teams are using findings, specific findings that might be relevant for their studies and their uh, uh, investigations and the webinars that we are promoting because it is really, I mean, my data from the market. So hard to challenge. Okay, I don't hear something. I don't know if anyone is commenting something. I hope that things went well from a technology perspective. Um, Okay, I see a question from Scott. How do the findings compare offer or uh, compare differ with other other service are some characteristics unique to Sweden? Well, um, we we are right now the one other report that is being produced at a global perspective, but at a different kind of a model is what is called within the project world, the project the PMI world, the pulse of the profession. 
So this is a report that is coming uh, all across. I mean, it's a global report. And uh, this is addressing similar tasks, yet not to such depth. Uh, I would say that uh, when we compare, we see that we do not perform so well. I mean, uh, comparing, uh, using, uh, looking at the global perspective. I mean, Sweden is kind of, uh, I mean, what we see from our results in that we are, in a way, a bit lower than the average in the success rates that we have. Uh, what we are also lagging, what we were also lagging into was in areas like risk management, uh, where uh, we were, there is a finding that you might see into the report. And you should, uh, I forgot to put it, to put it into the presentation, but just Google it under a Swedish project review and you will find all the reports in PDF documents. Um, what you will see there is that, um, when we were looking at risk management, uh, we had a finding in up until 2018 that uh, four out of 10 respondents stop managing uh, risks at the end of the planning phase, meaning at the moment that you are starting a project was the moment that they were stopping managing and uh, monitoring risks, which is outrageous. Um, and for a uh, society that's so well organized. Um, and that is something that we addressed a lot. We put a lot of attention for two years in our uh, webinars and our presentations and the message that was going out. And we see now in the results of 2020, this going around to 30%, to around 30%. So we kind of consider that a small win on what we do. But um, that's what I can. Uh, that's what I can say. Yes, Scott, I kind of agree. Well. I cannot, I don't want to put labels that uh, Sweden is more critical or honest. It's, we are hard with ourselves. Uh, that's true. But uh, we prefer to have, I mean, facts because based on, based on facts, you can improve. I mean, you cannot uh, tap yourself in the back and say that you're great. You can do that once or twice, but not forever. Let's see. Any last question? That's the link also I just posted into the chat, the link of the latest report. And I mean, if you Google that, you can find the rest for the past years. I definitely recommend, uh, we have also been discussing a bit with this, the Greek chapter to do something similar. I definitely recommend that you address that. And in many areas, it's not only in project management. What is important is to find ways to take the pulse of your profession. If you do that, then you can use, you can have very important info, uh, data and information that you can use to challenge yourself, challenge your organization and distinguish from the competition. That is very useful. I, I, I more, and more, more and more emphasize on that, on the people that we're meeting. Good. Thank you very much then for our uh, for the presentation today. I hope it all went well and you managed to to get the point. If you still have any questions, reach out to me in any of those ways or any other ways. I think with some with some of you that I see that are connected, I have to say good morning in in Greece and um, or wherever you are sitting in the world. And uh, let's exchange information. Let's exchange opinions. This is what only makes us better. Thank you very much.